Hello there ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. Um, I do have a topic for this video. Um, I kind of wanted to give some tips and tricks uh, to any new drivers out there also just starting, whether it be in London or anywhere really, because it kind of all applies. Um, but I suppose in a way, it's like some of these points will be specifically for London, because obviously I don't know where, you know, like what the rules are and I will, you know, all that stuff in other parts of the country, but uh, so I've made some notes uh, for this one, just because I will forget. But yeah, so this is just mainly for London, but it can be used, um, you know, for other parts of the country. Because I've been here six months now, so I've been driving for six months, so I've picked up a few things. Uh, so first one, take your time. Very self-explanatory, do not rush. Because especially when you're first starting, the controllers know, and the garage knows, you're not going to be, like, the best at keeping to the schedule and all that stuff so don't bother trying to like stress yourself out by like going oh god I'm two minutes behind schedule like don't worry like every driver will tell you don't worry about it because it's not worth worrying about because that's what the controllers are paid for the controllers are paid to worry about the schedule not you your main concern is safety that's all that's important to you so if you see me look over there it's just because I'm just looking at the time uh, but uh, yeah, so just just keep it light and breezy. Um, and again, yeah, the second point I've put down is don't worry about keeping to the schedule or your headway. If you start falling behind, do not rush. Don't start like breaking speed limits just to get a little bit closer to getting back to perfect. Don't bother. Yeah, it's not your. It's never ever okay to break the law just to get back on schedule. Yeah, if you start running late. You know, just don't worry about it. There's no point worrying about it. Because the more you worry about it, like, the more stressed you're going to get, the worse it's going to be for you, yeah? And it could lead you to getting disciplinaries because you broke the speed limit and all that kind of stuff. So don't bother. So my next point is, this is a very important one, don't be afraid to talk to other drivers. Very simple point. But even if it's just saying hello or good morning or good afternoon, speak to them. Like, I know they may look grumpy and scary, but they're actually nice people when you get to talk to them. Like, yesterday, I didn't include this in the vlog, um, but on my last trip, there was a bus that broke down at Peckham, so obviously the control told us to um, to backplate, meaning, obviously, you know, the driver waiting at, the, at, the, at Peckham would take our bus, and then we wait for the next bus to come, and we take that bus. I'll, I'll explain that in my, um, in my duty card video. Obviously, I'll leave a uh, link in the description if you haven't seen it but in that video I kind of explain what black uh, back plating is um, and it's this it's the same here like I was speaking to him like while he was setting up I was speaking to him being like you know what's happened with the bus and he was like oh it's something to do with the ramp and all that kind of stuff apparently you know and we had a nice conversation you know but even if it's just saying hello good morning good afternoon it's how you build up you know that relationship with that person because because you said hello to that person before They'll then go, oh, you're right, mate, you know, when they next see you. So it's about, you know, it's just about being friendly with each other, you know, because we're all, we're all work for the same company, you know, you all work for the same goal. So just don't be afraid to say hello. Um, use the big red book. Now, I do plan to make a video about the big red book. It's basically the driver's handbook, or some drivers call it the Bible. You know, so it's it's your saving grace. It has everything, all the rules, you know, tips, you know, on how to serve bus stops or use the wheelchair ramp, how to speak to passengers, everything, like, you know, to the uh, phonetic alphabet, you know, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, all that. So you can learn that. You know, it's very important that you read it. Take it with you everywhere you go because if you get stuck and you don't have, like, say, radio contact, for example, because you're in fallback mode on your MDT, you know, you can use that to help you out if, you, if you, there was a question you had, yeah? And the next one I put down is, don't be afraid to call the controller for help or advice if you have a question. Very important. I know the control, I know like people do think it's, you know, drivers versus controllers, but we are all meant to work together. And a lot of them are really, really nice. Obviously, if you don't annoy them. You know, like I did that the, uh, not too long ago. I forgot to call the controller when I got to Peckham over 10 minutes, uh, sorry, Thames Mead over 10 minutes late and I forgot to call him to ask for a departure time. And uh, he got very annoyed at me. 
But again, most of the time they're really nice. So don't be afraid to, um, you know, to ask them. Yeah, whether it be like say a diversion's just been announced for the route, you know, and you like you're kind of like right, um, I'm not too sure. Give the controller a call and be like, I'm not too sure on what the diversion is. Again, can you let me know? And he'd be like, Yeah, okay, okay, I can see where your location is. Um, I don't know, say you, you serve the next two bus stops and you'll come to a junction, you turn left, turn right and all that stuff. Don't be afraid to ask them for help. Obviously, if you've got a problem with your bus, you need to call them. But also, if you're not too sure about something on the bus, give them a call. You know, like if you've got a problem with a passenger and you don't know what to do, give them a call. You know, they're there to help. They're there to help you. Not just about keeping to your schedule, but also about, you know, any other query. So use them. Use them to their advantage. You know, to your advantage. If you, the next point I put down, if you are feeling stressed, don't be afraid to talk to a member of staff or a driver. They're all there to support you, you know, drivers especially, you know, because we all, you know, we all go through the same thing. So use each other, help each other. You know, if you're having a bad day, just be like, oh, I'm having such a crappy day. And they'll be like, what happened? And I've like, oh, got here late and then, you know, and had a near miss and like, it's just like inspiring out of control. You know, or talk, because uh, at Plumster we have an emotional well-being officer, so they're there to talk to you. Like they're there for they're there for you if you need to talk about mental health and all that stuff. But don't be afraid to talk to them about it. And you can talk to them anonymously. You can send them like a, a letter, or if you don't want to talk to them face to face, you can use the. Uh, if you're with Stagecoach, you'll have a, an app called the Blink. Uh, you can direct message them on there and it's all private so only they see it so you don't have to talk to them in person if you're not comfortable with that so I put down here uh, a bit of lingo like I put down the main one is rounder and rounder basically means one complete trip so for example if you drive from the garage to Thamesmead so you start at Thamesmead yeah so the complete trip would be Thamesmead to Peckham Peckham back to Thamesmead so think of it as a circle you start in the middle Halfway is Peckham, and then back to Thamesmead. That's what a rounder is. It's a circle. So if you start a plus, so for example, I so for example, say I'm doing, I don't know, say Plumstead. I start from Plumstead, pick up the bus at Plumstead, go to Thamesmead, then go to Peckham, and then I go back to Plumstead. That's a rounder because I started at Plumstead. Went to Thamesmead, so I started at Plumstead at the top, went to Thamesmead, that's halfway, yeah, then Peckham, and then back up to uh, Plumstead again. So that's basically what it means. That's the main one you have to know, like, because you'll hear them go, oh, how many rounders you got, you know? Um, the next point I put down is don't worry about other road users, slash, don't feel pressured by them. So you're a very slow vehicle, you know, the main speed you're probably going to be doing is about 20 miles an hour. Like, and that's the speed I feel comfortable driving a bus. It's 20 miles an hour. It, it feels natural. When I get up to 30, I'm like, whoa. That's what it, feel, that's what it feels like. Um, it feels really, really fast when you're going 30 miles an hour in a bus. In a car, it just feels normal. But in a bus, it's, it's at a high speed because you've got to think about the stopping distances of a, of a 12 ton vehicle like this. You know, it's not instantaneous. Even though the brakes are pretty good on buses, it's still not instantaneous. So, if you see that like, in your mirrors they're getting really really close or honking their horn don't react to it keep driving you know the speed you want Re like remember this you've got you know you could have up to like 90 to 100 passengers like obviously post covid slash pre covid you would have like 90 to 100 passengers on a bus you know and if you start breaking the speed limit just to keep the the person behind you happy what happens if you have an accident you know and people get injured and some even may die that's on you and you've broken the law don't break the law for other people as long as you're not breaking the law you're doing the right thing okay uh, next one put down the passengers are not in charge you are in charge as it's your vehicle very important if a passenger says come on drive the bus don't feel pressured to do what they ask you know or if they go, how long are we going to be stuck at this bus stop driver? And you say, uh, about three minutes. I've been told to hold for about three minutes. And they might go, that's not good enough. I want you to leave now. You say, no. Right? They are not in charge. It's your vehicle, your responsibility. You make the decision, yeah? 
they don't. Like, I know they may go, oh yeah, we help to contribute to your wages and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, they, they, they make a small contribution to your wages, but at the end of the day, it's not their vehicle, it's yours. You're in control, you have the license. You gotta remember, you're the professional, therefore you've gotta make the decisions, yeah? Right, I'm gonna end this little part here because I've got about three minutes, so I'm gonna get set up. Um, but I've got a couple more points um, that are on my little bits and notes. So obviously I'll I'll um, I'll go through that when I um, get to the other end. I should hopefully have about 20 minutes. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in a little bit, guys. Take care. Hello, hello there, ladies and gents. Welcome back. Uh, you join me at Peckham at the other end. Uh, I sad uh, tad to say. Um, running a tad early I've bagged myself half an hour on the stand um, which shouldn't happen uh, I think my leader was in fullback mode because I caught up to him and obviously normally the headway can will be all the way to the right so like you're literally like behind him and even when I overtook him it didn't so I think he's in fullback so don't bother me more stand time for me um, but anyway so we'll continue so I left off if I remember on yeah the passengers aren't in charge and yeah they're not in charge at all you know um, you know it's your vehicle you're in charge of their safety you know like don't let them push you about you know they're not the ones with the license you know you've technically got everything to lose so you need to cover your back you know and that goes into the next point where make sure you cover your back so you, you'll get I guarantee you'll get pulled in for stupid reasons a, a reason that I can think of at the top of my head is, um, you know, like, there's say there's traffic just by Peckham here, you know, getting into the bus station, you know, they'll be like, mate, can you just let me off here? You know, you'll get people ask you that, even when, like, you're at the traffic lights, you know, where you're on a main road, you've got cyclists cy cycling past, you've got um, people on scooters, you know, uh, mopeds, the, the lot. So, I, I obviously, I always say to them, no, because it's too dangerous. I'm not close to the curb. You know, so it's not safe. You know, and you'll get people press the emergency buttons and get off anyway. So obviously, when I say cover your back, make sure obviously you have the talk of them saying, don't do it because obviously it's against regulations. You know, you're like when it comes to opening the doors, like it's, it's, there's an announcement called safe door opening we have, and it's basically like you need to like basically position the front of the bus towards the curb so it blocks any cyclists or anything coming down that side and potentially injuring people you know so it's just about protecting yourself you know so making sure that you know if you put in a memo for example I don't want to get too much into the politics of it but if you put in a memo say you want to go on the 96 for example and then you ask like oh uh, did, you know, did you get the memo and all that and they would be like no take a screenshot of it to show that you sent one you know to them so you know like they can't say anything then they can't go well we never got a memo you can go well what's that then you show them your phone and everything i don't want to get too much into the office politics because um you know it's just you know uh the next point i've got is make sure you check for notice boards for any diversions and bus stop closures very very important it is the driver's responsibility to check for any diversions or any bus stop closures anything like that you have to check so every time you get your duty card yeah every time you get your duty card um, make sure you go around to the notice board and check to see if there are any diversions on the route any planned bus stop closures any planned diversions for the future so say as a di they've just put one up to say yeah in 10 days time it's gonna be a diversion learn it you know get into that routine of going okay so the diversion is in 10 days I've got 10 days to like memorize it obviously you don't necessarily need to memorize it because they'll put diversion boards up any planned diversions obviously they'll put boards up for them with the arrows going like turn right turn left and all that but it's always good to know it off by heart anyway because think about it if if you um, if there's like an unannounced diversion so say there's an RTC for example and it's that diversion that th that's happening in 10 days time you know it already so you haven't got to call up the controller and bother them being like I don't know it can you repeat to me as soon as like, you hear them say over the radio like, I know that I've just revised that for when um, it's the cl it's a, there's a plan closure for it so it's always good to kind of get ahead of the game um, another thing I've got down here is don't be afraid to make mistakes slash accidents 
very like I, it's it's advice that I I I, I can give out, but I'm very bad at um, following my advice. Like I give good advice, but I'm very bad at following it. Like that's not just like when it comes to work stuff. Like that's like you know with my friends as well. I give good advice, but yeah, I I struggle to follow it myself. Do you know what I mean? Like they go, that's really good advice, and yeah, yeah, I don't follow it properly myself. Do you know what I mean? But it's true. You are guaranteed to have an accident, not necessarily like taking a wing mirror off, but a and having an actual accident. You know, like yeah, taking your near side mirror off. Yeah, that's gonna happen because it sticks out like an extra foot, you know. But in terms of actually having like an RTC, even if it's just like a little incident, like a minor incident, like you scratched someone's car, you took their mirror off or whatever, you know, you're guaranteed to have one of them within the first two years of um, having a PCB license. Like they teach you that in in uh, when you do your CPC course, they teach you that you are guaranteed to have an accident like that in the first two years. So don't be afraid, don't be afraid, just don't be afraid, like yeah, you know, at the end of the day, they've got to show some compassion, at the end of the day, you're human, you know, you're, you're a human being, you're not a robot, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to get tired, you're going to just lose that second of concentration, it happens, unfortunately, you can't stop it from happening, so don't be afraid, um, don't be afraid when you have an accident thinking, oh, I'm going to lose my job, you won't, if it's your first offence, yeah, Normally, if you've got a good record in terms of like Green Road and no customer complaints, all that kind of stuff, then normally your first offence, they did this for me, like when I took the mirror off like, uh, when I'm trying to pass a lorry in Greenwich, they put it down as guidance, meaning it goes on your record but no formal action is taken. They're just saying that, you know, we've taught you how to avoid those kind of things, so don't do it again kind of thing, but next time any further offences may result in disciplinary which is what's going to happen to me uh, now that I've had another accident. But, you know, I know I'm not going to lose my job because, again, they'll check my record. They'll see, OK, Green Road, he's doing really well. He's not a reckless driver, meaning it's not an accident that was going to happen. Like, it's, it's just one of them, like, instances where you got unlucky, you know? Like, normally... Um, Normally, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, normally, you know, you do that same maneuver a hundred times, nothing happens. This time, you got unlucky. You know, it's it's one of them things. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And that's the another thing. Do not, not report it. If you don't report it, you could face even further action, even police action, especially if you hit someone's car and the owner isn't there. You know that's a criminal offence, that is obviously a hit and run, yeah, so make sure you report it, obviously if the owners, if you hit an owner's car and they're present, you don't need to report it to the police because the owner's there, you know, but if they're not there, you have to call the police and say I've just been involved in an accident, I've hit someone's car, the owner's not there, um, and obviously they'll take your details and they'll pass it on to the, uh, to the owner, and as well you have to report it to the garage, you have to report it, because if they find out you've been involved in an accident and you didn't tell them, you'll be even in bigger trouble, even dismissal. In I don't know if that's like a, a regular case in the sense of you don't report it, that's it, you know, you'll most likely get suspension, potentially, or yeah, you'll most likely get a suspension, and obviously, depending on how many offences you have, could be your written warning or your final written warning, whatever. Um, but make sure you you have to report it and the thing is it's also a big learning curve for you because it takes guts to report when you've had an accident because normally people want to hide it because obviously it's embarrassing you know it just makes you out to be like you can't drive and you're not a good driver when you know you're a good driver because you clearly are because you've achieved a PCV license you've got a PCV license you know that's it's difficult to achieve not everyone can't do it but you have to understand that Obviously, essentially, you know, having a lot of power has a lot of responsibility, you know, and you are a big vehicle and you've got, you know, a lot can go wrong with a big vehicle, you know. So just don't be an idiot, you know, make sure you report it. Own up to your mistakes because that's how you grow as a person, yeah, and 
the thing, especially with our company, they rely, they rely a lot on trust. You know? They rely a lot on trust. You know, if, if they can't trust you, they don't want to hire you. And, you know, they don't want you involved in with the company. It's built on trust and honesty. You know, so if you own up to your mistakes, you won't necessarily have a bad reputation with them, like like a bad rapport with them, rather. So don't be afraid to make mistakes, own up to them, you know, because that's how you grow. And it's just, it's not worth risking your career, as I've said many times. Um, but I've got two final points. Uh, and they kind of um, link together. Have fun. You know, the more you stress, the less fun it is. And if you really want to be a bus driver, smile. Just try and smile, even if it's just like that. It makes you feel better. And if the passengers see that you're, you know, you're acknowledging them, they won't be, you know, they won't be a pain in the backside. You know, it's about just trying to have fun with it. There is a lot of responsibility, yeah? But again, if you just do what you're told, you follow the procedures. It's a job for life, you know. I've, I've, I know drivers who I've seen, you know, worked in this job for like 20, 30 years, or even 40 years, you know. I mean, there's a driver who's been here like 40, 45 years. So it's like, it's a job for life, you know. If you just do what you're told, follow a procedure, you know, you just be honest, you know. They expect you to make mistakes. Obviously, you just can't have mistakes in like too many mistakes in one period, because you got to remember, if you have an accident, it stays on your your file for a year. So it stays on your file for one year. So it's very important, you know, you don't like clock up too many accidents in one year, because then it could lead to dismissal, you know. But again, if you follow the rule of of what I've said about just taking your time, assess the situation. You know, so what I mean by that is you got a box. There's a, I'm, so I'm parked next to the box junction right here. I can see it, especially for a bus. It's quite a difficult thing to like analyze because you're like, right, OK, um, you know, I'm right at the edge of it. You know, I can see the traffic's moving. Do I risk it or do I wait that extra second to see, you know, like are they only moving an inch? Or are they moving, you know, like a metre or two metres? Do you know what I mean? So it's about, you know, it's about just taking your time. Don't worry about people behind you. If they're bibbing you, so what? You know, if if, it, if it's a two-lane street, they could just go in the other lane and overtake you. Who cares? You know, they'll give you the finger. Who cares? You know, at the end of the day, as long as you're not breaking the law or breaking the highway code, you are doing your job and you are being a good citizen and obeying the law, Yeah. The law's there to protect you. The highway code is there to protect all road users. You have to follow the highway code. People don't like to, especially when it comes to letting buses out. You know, you're meant to let a bus out when it's safe to do so. And there's many times where it's safe to do so and people don't bother. But it's, yeah, so it's just about, if you just take your time, assess the situation, just wait until you are certain you can make it past a box junction or wait until you can, uh, wait until you're certain you can make it through a pedestrian crossing or uh, a set of pelican crossing lights, you know. Just wait until you're certain and you'll be fine, you know. But yeah, so have fun, you know. That's all I can say really, it's just have fun with it. But um, I hope you have enjoyed this little um, talkative video. Uh, I know I've got some drivers who are subscribers, so if I did miss any tips or tricks, definitely leave them in the comments. Um, be good to hear your suggestions of uh, some tips and tricks for new people um but yes yeah, so obviously i've been working here six months so i thought i'd share some information you know hopefully if you're you are in the process or thinking about you know joining um hope these tips can be useful for you but yeah so i'm gonna sign off here i'm gonna enjoy you know i've got about another 10 12 minutes so I'm just gonna relax listen to some music switch off for a bit but that's the other thing, yeah. Switch off when you can. And don't feel pressure to do overtime. Overtime is optional for a reason. Because you're going over your time, yeah? 
So switch off when you can, because you know you do this job six or seven days in a week, and then you have two days off. Use those two days to rest. Don't feel pressured to do overtime. Very important, because sleep is more important. Family, friends, you know, social life, sleep, they're all more important than making that extra bit of money. Trust me, you know? Because you'll lose friends if you never go out with them, you know? Just saying. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to sign off here. So I'm going to keep going on for like another 20 minutes. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. And again, if you have any drivers uh, who've got any more suggestions for tips and tricks, please leave them in the comments. Um, and yeah, have a great day or evening whenever you're watching this. And I'll see you next time. Take care.